Hey, welcome to Faith Life Now. We're Gary and Drinda Cassie. We're so glad you're with us today. Yes. Listen, would your life change if you went from $5,000 a year to $200,000 a year in 12 months? I bet it would. But how did that happen? I want to find out how that happened. Our guest today had that happen. We're going to listen to their story in just a minute. Yes, you know, we realize there's some tough things going on in the financial community and in, in the economy, and people are worried about things. But we're going to show you today how you can rise above the economy in every situation how to kickstart your life today. A lot of people have what I call mailbox mentality. They just keep waiting for something to happen. God's gonna show up, the lightning bolt's gonna come, you know, whatever they're gonna believe God for it just to happen. But the example is that he's gonna give us direction like Peter and he had to go catch the fish. The reward, maybe, maybe somebody's reward today might just be paying the bills on time. Yeah. You know, it could be that that reward, it may not be a, you know, a 50th anniversary Corvette. It might yeah. be something right. very simple. Well, to... There's the practical side and then there's who am I going to put my trust in? Am I really going to believe God or am I not going to believe God? Hey, welcome to Faith Life Now. We are excited to have our guest with us today. We're talking about life and how money flows. We need yes. money, of course, you know that. But I want to just welcome our guest right now. I want to welcome David Johnson, CEO of Epiphany Marketing and Business Consultant, Marketing Consultant. David, Thank you. it's just awesome to have you oh, with it's us. It's just an honor to be here. I appreciate it Great very much. Great to have you, And Mike and Stacy Healy, business owners. Hi. And we're glad to have you here. So awesome to have you. And glad the story here. we mentioned at the beginning of the show was your story. $5,000, <laughs> if I get the numbers right, to $200,000 in 12 months. That is true. Uh, you got it. That is, just, that is wild. Now, from what I understand, you were living in government housing, right? Yes. It was government bad. housing. Yeah. Well, tell us what it was like when you were in that situation. What was going on? Well, we were uh, basically, we came out of the bar business and we were just kind of transitioning into uh, even knowing what the Bible was. <laughs> and uh, we, we started, you know, kind of believing God for different things. But we were in dire straits, uh, to say the least. How dire? I mean, you know, what, um, what's dire? Well, we were married for eight years and we were still living in apartments, which, you know, most people wouldn't think that that bad. But we were struck. We were just struggling financially to just get the bills paid. I'll tell you how bad. Is, okay. tell, tell, no, you're going to tell yeah, me. This, this, is, this is a story. great story. This we is a great story. We've got our We've got ours too. <laughs> we, were, we were so, we had such a, uh, we were in such poverty that to save money, Stacy canceled our $13 a month trash pickup service and was putting <laughs> trash in the trunk of our car. And I didn't know it oh. until she left some there during the summer and for a couple she days. And where taking it to? I didn't have a place yet, but I was in the middle of plan. I was, I was, I was. I was very hot outside, so. <laughs> it, it was very embarrassing. It was a humbling experience, <laughs> to say the least. I remember I got a microwave as a gift. I took it back to the store to get the money, and then I got another microwave and took it back to the store. It's like, can I keep a microwave? Whatever you can do to keep things uh, Okay, gone. so $13. Yeah. It's so not we know funny. That, it's not uh, funny. I, I don't mean, no, I'm kidding. It's not It's not funny It is now, but it's it wasn't It's funny to look back and think the things we go through to get by, but it's not not funny when you're in. As a matter of fact, it's a desperate situation to be mm -hmm. in, right? Right. Yeah, that's yes. not good. That's so anyway, you're in a desperate situation. And what, I mean, that's a huge change. So tell us a little bit you know, what, what happened. Um, well, you know what? I actually started going to church, um, okay. your church, by the way, which was uh, kind of amazing, and started to really believe that God uh, was real. That, that kind of helped first and foremost. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of nice. That's a good start. Yeah, that was a good start, I figured. <laughs> And I was really impressed with a lot of stuff that you were teaching. And it just, uh, as a person who was trying to start a business, something just kind of went off on in, in this inside of me. I was like, man, if uh, I'd heard your story and I was like, if he can do it, I know I can. Because it was That's almost right. exactly where yeah, I was at. There were the icons for all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, it was, it was, it was bad. <laughs> and we just started yeah. to pursue some of the things. And we, we, we saw it. Uh, we actually saw little things begin to work. Right. And it was kind of like, you know, how you put your toe in the water. Yeah, that's, that's how, how we works. were with with uh, right. finances and life. And we started to, to get that. And but really what happened was we began to completely change our mindset uh, by listening, renewing our mind. It says, you know, be be not conformed wow. yeah. to the things of this world, but be renewed by, the, you know, the word that's, and changing and listening yes. to successful business people. David, business consultant, entrepreneurial mindset. Tell us about it. What? Uh, What's actually happening and why do so many people hesitate or fail to actually capture what he's saying with that mindset change? Well, I like what I'm hearing you say because in your situation, you went from uh, just you know, dire straits to believing that something is possible. And Gary, that's what I think has is, is, is got to be step one. We have got to come to a place where we accept the fact 
that God has not only a solution yeah. to our situation, but a way to propel us forward into a new future that involves us reaching our destiny. I don't think when we're you know, in that kind of financial situation, we're thinking about fulfilling our calling or our <laughs> destiny or what, what I was created for. We're just surviving. Yeah, we're trying to figure out where to put the yeah. garbage. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, I forget to take it out of there. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's, the, that's the place where people are finding themselves today because of the economic situations, yeah. losing jobs and, and uh, you know, dis- different things happening with the economy. And today is the day where God is really encouraging people uh, yeah. to, to believe that something is possible. Yeah, there absolutely. are solutions. There are ways out. There are solutions. I want to just mention a story in the Bible. We're going to keep this story kind of rotating through here. But, yeah. uh, you know, Peter had taxes to pay in Matthew 17. He went to Jesus, and he told him about the problem. I need, ta- I need money. And Jesus said, go catch a fish. And in the fish's mouth, you're going to find a gold coin and pay your taxes. Now, that story seems kind of innocent at front, but there's more to it. See, Peter was a fisherman. He had a business. In other words, let me say this. He knew how to fish. Jesus directed him to a net, a a, a system, a business, if you will, tapped into his experience as a fisherman to go catch his money. A lot of people, if I said, okay, you need to catch some money, they they just stare at you. They're like, "Uh, well, you know, they're not hiring. They're not hiring, Gary. I mean, what do you mean catch money? It's not floating by in the atmosphere for me to grab. It's not floating, but... In my, our experience, God gave us a dream. We started a business. That dream produced the money to get out of debt. And then what you're saying in your experience, you had a business, but God began to change it. Mm-hmm. And things began to change in your mindset. Is that right? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. In a big way. Big uh, way. Every, everything began to change. I started being, it just felt like I was being led to, to listen to things that I hadn't listened to before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hadn't really ever read a book in my life. And <laughs> was like, you know, and I started all of a sudden wanting to read, you know, business books. And it was really amazing the things that we started have, uh, having happen just almost immediately from the time we made the commitment to make a decision to change. So you brought God into your business, really. You brought him into your life. You brought him into every part of your life, right? Yes. Your business life. So you already had businesses, and they were failing. Yes. But something, you started changing that. Now, you know, an interesting thing, uh, God directs us. When we, we come to him for money, you know, he doesn't have any money. There's no money in heaven. Look, at any piece of money, there's an earthly kingdom stamped on it. So it means you have to capture it or produce wealth. That's, that's right. the power of, that we have on the inside, yeah. David, that, that the, uh, the Holy Spirit creates. And uh, you do that for a living. You, can, you, you help people understand how to create. That's exactly right. You know, what, what we find is that God has put in all of us gifts and talents. And those are there to deliver value in the marketplace. And that value can be exchanged for what we need. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. it is possible for anyone listening today, anyone, right. anyone, to do what we're talking about. Okay, doing. hold yes. that thought. I want to come back to that anyone because I don't know if everyone believes that they're an anyone. Okay, <laughs> I know what you mean. Right. So when we come back in a moment, we're going to talk about you being that anyone. I know you may not believe that you're that anyone, but God does, and you need to be that anyone. When we come back, we're going to talk about your solution, your income needs. When we come back. Today, you may find yourself waiting on God to do something about your financial situation. But what you may not realize is God is waiting on you. Your answers lie in the opportunities that surround you. It's time to take hold of them and change your mindset to one of action now. This is your opportunity to get the tools and the resources that will help you take charge. Gary is offering his business success package for ministry gift of $35 or more. In this package, Gary is including his six CD series titled Open for Business. In this series, you will learn how to get a plan and understand the marketplace, how to be a leader and get creative ideas, how to expand your success potential, and how to identify your nets. Gary is also including two bonus CD messages titled Making the Unseen Tangible by David Johnson and Do What Others Won't by Mike Healy. Order the business success package today by calling 1-888-391-LIFE or by visiting www.faithlifenow.com. Hey, just I want to I think about this anyone thing, David. You mentioned yeah. anyone. Do you really mean anyone? I do. I do. We all have areas of gifting, areas of expertise, areas where 
uh, our calling shines through. But so many times, you know, when we're in dire straits or desperate situations, we're not thinking about what's inside of us. Mm. And we need to begin to allow God to reveal that those areas of gifting and expertise that we have uh, are, are built not for us to keep to ourselves. Like, a, you know, we, we, we take the lamp and we put it okay. in, in a prominent right. place, not that's under right. a bushel, right? So we yeah. become someone else's answer as we're getting our answer. Exactly. And yes. that's the process. That's the way the kingdom works. All right. right. Let's, let's, let's take this to a real life example because a lot of people have what I call mailbox mentality. They just keep waiting for something to happen. God's going to show up. A lightning bolt's going to come. You know, whatever they're going to believe God for it just happen. But the example is that he's going to give us direction like Peter. And he had to go catch the fish. Uh, right. David had to take Goliath out. I mean, you, you have to capture the moment. And these are areas of expertise. You yeah. know, Peter was a fisherman. He knew about that. David had already been protecting sheep and had, you know, risked his life. Uh, in that way. That's so these are, these are areas that were, and we all have these kind of common experiences. Well, right. Mike and Stacy, they worked, you guys worked out in the gym like every day. Yeah, we yep. like to work through out. this process. Yep. Yep. And on the poster board, you saw a contest uh, for whoever got in the best shape over a period mm -hmm. of time, mm -hmm. and you engaged that. That was in your realm of experience. Mm -hmm. God quickened something. I don't know how many people passed that thing and thought, mm -hmm. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. But the, tell me about it. The reward was a brand new car. It was a, it was a before and after contest yeah. where you make yourself look really bad before and then you, whoever <laughs> so can you look the best. Food. You must jump You don't jump. make yourself we well, look bad. I did, well, I just had a baby, but I know, you know. that's all right. <laughs> <clears throat> it was four months after I had my last child and I wanted to get in shape and I thought, you know, I need a reward at the end of this rainbow. Yeah. And when I saw the poster, something just went off. I thought, I can do that. So I pr started to prepare myself for the commitment that it was going to take. Okay, I want to stop. You okay. said to yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. You said to yourself, I can do yes. that. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the first step. Right. Okay, so now go on. I just think, you know, if any, anybody can, can say to themselves, okay, I'm going to get in shape. But you have to take so much mentally. And, you know, yeah. for so me, what it was, was the reward. The reward was a 2003 50th anniversary Corvette, which was very nice to win. Hmm. You, I remember the day I pulled into church. Yes. <laughs> There's Mike's leaning against the Corvette. Yes. <laughs> I was working at the, at front the parking door, lot duty. At parking lot duty so. and telling everyone the story. Yes. Yeah, it was right. nice. It was well, when, you, when you test the principles of God, you believe something, you work for it, you want people to know this is what God did. It's a glory to yeah. him, right? Yeah, but you were in debt. And so you had yes. to sell the car to yes. pay debt. But the point I want to make is, even in, you, were in, you were just coming out of the mindset of living in debt, and you've got to begin to prosper ideas. Two things. Number one, he quickened to you a direction. Mm -hmm. Number two, even though you were in debt and you know, still struggling financially, you paid $500 a month for a trainer mm -hmm. through that process. That's right. how committed you were to it. Right, because right, I had actually what was, we, were, we had started a business, and I had reason I was starting because I was thinking big and, you know, you reinvest your money and all these types of things. And, and when that contest came around, I was like, well, who better of an investment than my wife and myself who want to do this and good. get in shape? Yes, sir. And I looked at it and I was like, well, $500 at the time was a lot of money, but, it was, but, I, knew, but I believed in the reward if, if right. we did it. Worst case, she was going to be in great shape and I was going to, you know, it was going to be awesome anyhow. And we invested that $500 just to, yes. to on a personal trainer. And she was diligent on that, and then yeah. literally the reward came from that diligence. Something yeah. I'm hearing in both of you is confident expectation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had, because of your connection with God, even though you had, you're living in government housing, things are tough, you know, tight finances, you mm -hmm. still had your dreams there, and with your connection with God, you had a confident expectation that if you made the right, you know, uh, commitment to it, you said, and you put mm -hmm. forth the effort, that there was a reward coming. And that's, that's a powerful anyway, yeah. principle it because is. you're talking about setting your eye on the prize. Right. You know, Jesus endured the cross and the shame for the for joy, the joy yes. that was set before him. Yeah. And the other thing that I think is really powerful, uh, uh, the reward, maybe, maybe somebody's reward today might just be paying the bills on time. Yes. Yes. You know, it could be that that reward, it may not be a, you know, a 50th anniversary Corvette. It might yeah. be something right. very simple. Well, you start testing the principles of God in a small way. That's exactly right. And yes. you keep yeah. moving into greater things. Yes. But the scripture says the thoughts of the diligent tend to plenteousness, and, uh, but everyone who is patient and, and hasty hastens only to want. That's from Proverbs 21. And what I love about what you guys did is in the process of, here's a reward, but there's also effort. This wasn't oh, yeah. trying to win the lottery. Yeah. You know, we're not lot telling somebody to go buy yeah. lotto yeah. tickets right. you know, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and try to you know, believe God for something in that way. This right. was a contest that involved you doing yes. and engaging 
yes. in the natural realm as right. well as engaging the supernatural. Yeah. Right. Now, since then, you started many businesses. You've done many, and now you're mm -hmm. you're doing motivational speaking at corporations because yeah. of what you've learned through all these situations. Yeah. Right. Income went up a right. couple hundred thousand a year, but also. Uh, Tell me the giving. How about giving? That was I know that in your story that was a big part of it. Well, can I? I, want yeah. to, I would, this is this is real. I think this is a very important factor. Is that there's the practical side, and then there's who am I going to put my trust in? Am I really going to yes. believe God, or am I not going to believe God? That's good. That's good. And what happened? What was funny is I had worked parking lot duty during you know just volunteering at, at the church because I because yeah. I enjoyed doing something there after coming out of the bar business. I was even surprised they let me in, <laughs> but they you know they did. But it was great. I was yeah. like wow. And I got, we had, we were still looking to, to uh, you know, to make money and we were just still getting by and we sewed a van. Uh, we actually gave away a, a, a minivan. It wasn't really worth a lot, but it was a lot to us at the time. And what was amazing is right after that was exactly when this, when this contest showed up. Good and I didn't even think about it at the time um, until we drove off with this Corvette that, yes. that we had actually sewn a vehicle that well, was not even worth in the Bible, to that. bread multiplied <laughs> to bread, bread, oil multiplied to bread, fish same multiplied measure, to fish, you measure. sewed a car, you needed right. a car, and you had a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's it was, amazing, it's great. And great you did principle. it because you were moved with compassion. This family right. had several children, they needed some space, but you also had some things you needed. So you gave what you had into the kingdom, Amen. and the kingdom produced what you were believing yes. for. Mm -hmm. Here comes this Corvette, mm -hmm. and that produced when you sold that, a lot of income that you were able to pay off debt, right? That's fantastic. Right. Yes. David, talk to us for a minute. The anyone. People hear yeah. these types of stories and they think, I can't see myself there. Just briefly, just talk to someone out there today that's, that's needing that. We have about a minute here to talk about that for this next break. Absolutely. You know, God has placed in you everything mm -hmm. that you need. Uh, the Bible is very clear that all that we need is in the kingdom, and the kingdom of God is within you. And so it really doesn't matter what the obstacles look like that you're facing today. You have what it takes. What we need to begin with is just to simply to say, God, I want you to show me the opportunities that exist right here in front of me. You know, you guys right. sewed a van. Yes. Uh, you know, that was an opportunity that you had. Right. Right. And it, mm -hmm. at the time, you weren't even thinking about reaping, no. but you did. And this is the thing, that God has put some things in you that you have the ability to turn around and reap from if you'll sow them and if you'll share what God's put inside you. That's yes. fantastic. And looking for the opportunity. That's yeah. right. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to further that cause, how to further the principles. We're going to go a little further than that mm -hmm. story with the car because your life changed a lot after that. Right, right. And we're going to talk more about how to take advantage of the opportunities God's going to bring along. You know, when my family was going through all the hardships financially that we did, my life was just full of despair. I had no future. I had no experience, not really something I could grab hold of and say, this is the vehicle that I'm going to use to catch the money that I needed. I didn't have that. And life was bleak. But there's something you need in life. I'll tell you what it is. You need a plan. You need a plan. You know, God gave me a dream for a business. Now, that business was something I didn't have experience in, but he directed my path. And that plan that he gave me began to take, uh, take form and unfold before me. And in that plan, I could see my future. I could see my answer. I saw that I was not hopeless, that if I had this plan and I began to work the plan God gave me, that it would provide everything I needed. And it was exciting. Let me read a scripture to you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Please notice this. It doesn't say that God plans in the sense, I have a plan for you to prosper. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, the plans, plural, to give you a hope and a future. I believe what he's talking about is he knows the plans that we're to run with, the track we run on. And once we discover those plans, it brings a hope. Without a plan, without something to run with, without a vision, there's no hope. When we get those plans, hope rises up and we can see our future, we can begin to get a glimpse of our destiny. You say, well, Pastor, how do I get a plan? By the Holy Spirit. God gave it to me. He'll give it to you. So I'll tell you this, ask him. You need a plan and he'll give it to you. Well, I'll tell you what, we're, I mean, these stories are amazing to see the changes in people's lives. And our story, your, David's, all of our stories involve the marketplace. And one thing I'm trying to get across today, 
to people is this, that, again, God doesn't have money. You're going to have to engage the marketplace mm-hmm. at some place, some place where your skill set is, your gifting, wherever it's at. God will help you figure that out. But you're going to have to engage the marketplace, and God will give you a plan and direction. But we were talking about that, Stacy, and you said that to be bold. Oh, yeah. People just, sometimes people just don't take that first step in anything that they do. You have to be bold. Mike always says, I throw myself <laughs> through the glass and worry about the cuts later. Okay. I mean, sometimes well, you just have to do that. that's quite an example there, Mike. That is. <laughs> I got that so, from the bar business, yeah. by the way. <laughs> and we're not saying everyone's going to win a Corvette. That's a good point, Drew. Right. God right. has something for each person that's unique. Right. So don't go yeah. out and try to do Stacy and Mike's and make a formula out of it. Right. It's yeah. God seeking God, seeking his kingdom Amen. first, and be willing to step out and do something like you said jump through the glass you know worry well, about the situation the contest I mean people get I get emails all the time well should I win the lottery no that wasn't a lottery so you had experience in the athletic yes. business of training right. Mm-hmm. right so in your mindset that was doable because mm-hmm. you already knew the cost it would take yes. right you didn't say yes to something you didn't know you right. knew the cost you're telling yourself to take mm-hmm. And the possibility of it. So right. that's the same thing as Peter going to catch a fish. Exactly. He had yeah. the background, the understanding of that direction. So he didn't blow it off. He knew exactly, well, I can do that. I can go catch a fish. Right. Right. And so he did it. And that, David, again, yeah. we're talking about that. People have got to understand the process. Some people feel like, you know, I'm not an expert yeah. at this. You know, I, I may have something that I have some experience in, but I'm not the expert of life. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that we don't have to be the expert of life. You know, Peter may not have been the slickest fisherman, you yeah. know, in, in right. that part of the world, but he had some area where he was comfortable, and then there were clearly areas where he was lacking, and where you guys invested in yourselves. Look, all of us have the need to invest in ourselves, to develop skills, to develop right. abilities, but we do that in right. areas after God leads us, after we seek him and That's find true. out what those areas yeah. are, and we access the yeah. resources of the kingdom in order to do and that. And we keep moving to, to the next thing. God has something he's training you for today is preparing you for something he has for you tomorrow. And so point. if you don't say yes to, if, if Jesus said, go cast your nets over there, and they said, but Lord, we fished all night and caught nothing. Many people say that. They make an excuse. They stop there. But he said, nevertheless, Lord, because you said to do it, I'll go try my business again. I'll go do this new thing. We'll give our point. van away. We'll change some things. And because he did... He caught this great harvest of fish. Then he went on to become a fisher of men. Amen. Now you've gone on to do greater things. Yes. You've started many businesses. And so have you, David. Right. We've gone on to do things that we never dreamed we mm-hmm. would do. But had we have not said yes to the initial things that God asked of us, had we not been looking for opportunity and walking through those doors, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing today. Well, Dorinda, I think that you had, once, I always say, once you have that first experience with the kingdom, yes. that, oh my God. It, you yeah. see that car? We, yeah. right. Come here, look at that car. Well, we we believe God. We when you have that, we I mean, you guys that must have been like, uh, yeah. this is like a dream. We were absolutely <laughs> stunned. And what it, is, what it taught me from that there initial you, you, instant, yes. instance was more priceless than that price exactly. of getting that and That's what it always is. Because yes. that principle of learning that, of the sowing and reaping and the being right. diligent, was, had taken everything we did from that point, And I was like, I found, I found exactly what I needed. Yeah. And we've moved on from that point again and again right. and again. Same and principles, just, just different same situations. Principles. And that postures your vision completely different. Mm-hmm. It expands mm-hmm. it. But, you know, yeah. when we come back, we're going to talk about the tools. We have a great tool, a resource we're offering, your income kickstart package we're going to talk about. And it's just amazing. You can have the same kind of results we're having in our lives yeah. through the kingdom, not because of who we are necessarily, but through the kingdom's direction mm-hmm. and God helping us. So. We'll be right back with that kind of information for you. Today, you may find yourself waiting on God to do something about your financial situation. But what you may not realize is God is waiting on you. Your answers lie in the opportunities that surround you. It's time to take hold of them and change your mindset to one of action now. This is your opportunity to get the tools and the resources that will help you take charge. Gary is offering his business success package for ministry gift of $35 or more. In this package, Gary is including his six CD series titled Open for Business. In this series, you will learn how to get a plan and understand the marketplace, how to be a leader and get creative ideas, how to expand your success potential, and how to identify your nets. Gary is also including two bonus CD messages titled Making the Unseen Tangible by David Johnson and Do What Others Won't by Mike Healy. 
Order the Business Success Package today by calling 1-888-391-LIFE or by visiting www.faithlifenow.com. Wow, I'll tell you what, listening to these stories, Mike and David, you with this today is just impacting how I'm thinking. Even my yes. thinking is increasing as I sit and rehearse these principles mm -hmm. today. But you know, you mentioned investing in ourselves. Yes. And we, investing in ourselves causes us to think different. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, the scripture is very clear that the battle that we're all fighting here is one that's internal. You know, the problems might appear to be external, but in yeah. reality, the, the issues that we're dealing with are internal. And so we have to change what we're thinking. We have to change certainly what we believe and what we expect mm -hmm. if we're going to see anything change. That's right. And of course, we do that by studying the Word. We do that by listening to great teaching. Uh, we do that by absorbing uh, materials that can really dramatically yeah. impact. And certainly from, yeah. from people who have, who have been there. Yeah, I've been there. That's right. fantastic. Speaking of that, we have that right here. People that have been there that have tested the principles of the Bible found them to work. So yes. tell us, we're throwing together a package mm -hmm. of information that's going to help our people. So tell us what you're throwing in there. Sure. What I've got is a, is a CD called Making the Unseen Tangible. And this is where you take something that God has told you about or you've dreamed mm -hmm. about and you actually, it's a process, it's, it's taken right from the life of Abraham when God promised him mm -hmm. a son. And that was an unseen son that already existed right. in eternity. And Abraham had to bring him into the natural yes, realm. Bring the eggs to your face. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. A lot of people have good, good ideas, but yes. they have Gotta to do something with it. Stacy and Mike, action what action are you throwing in the, in the pot here? Well, I have a, uh, it's, it's something, a phrase that I've used for years in speaking uh, uh, to thousands and thousands of people worldwide. And it's all about doing today what others want so you can live tomorrow like others can't. Because oh, that's everybody, good. That's um, good. everybody out there has the chance or has the opportunity yeah. as anybody else to succeed or not to succeed, right. and it's if they choose to do so, but it's little, tiny, diligent steps that if they get those principles and they apply those, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer. It doesn't seem like a big thing, but it is, and if you take those things and put them together, yeah. it works so very no, well. So no room for victim mentality? No, not, no. Uh, not here. Thank anyone. No. No. Am I hearing the word anyone today? Is what's resonating yeah. in my anyone spirit. Anyone can yeah. do this. Anybody can yeah. do this. Anyone. anyone. Yeah. And we're throwing in our stories similar, coming out of the same mess and, you know, the principles <laughs> of God. Open for business is, uh, you say, well, that's where money's at, it's in the marketplace. Right. And so faithlifenow.com has a lot of resources. You can get this package there, and we encourage you to do that. Invest in yourself. Yes. Let God lead you to your potential, your destiny, and your future. It's a great place to yeah. live, and we want to thank you for joining us today. It's been a privilege to have you with us thank yes. you and hear your much. great thank stories, you. Yes. and we'll see you next time. Drendon, the entire Faith Life Now team, want you to know that God can transform not just your finances, but every aspect of your life. Visit us on the web at faithlifenow.com to discover more important information and resources that can impact your future. We'd also like you to consider joining us in partnership to take this message of financial freedom across the country. Write us or call right now and let us know that you want to join the Faith Life Now team and help support this incredible work. Until next time, remember that faith can transform your life right now.